Welcome once again. I am Peter Vigilio Olympio at House of Vigilio Rothwell Kennel, Ghana, West Africa. We are discussing still on the topic of stats, values, and tests. So in episode one, we discuss what stats are, requirements for calling your dog a start, and we further on discuss tests like brucellosis, HDED, that's elbow and hip dysplasia, and JLPP. In episode two, we are going to discuss um, ring worthiness and disqualifying faults. Jungle. Okay, guys, so uh, today's topic is proving in the ring and free of disqualifying faults. So we are going to look at uh, what proving in the ring means and then what disqualifying faults are. So then, first and foremost, the ultimate goal is to at least maintain and even improve each breed so that the future lines remain of the highest quality. So then what I mean is, um, so by this, when we attend dog shows and then there is a winner dog or there are a group of dogs, say about 10 dogs, I mean, I'm talking about, when I talk about dogs, I'm talking about the males. So there are about 10 of them. And then five qualify to the finals. At least, we know that for the next generation of breeding dogs, those five males in the finals will be considered. So then what happens is, the five males in this finals, even though not all five will win the first spot, the five in this final means they don't have, they're free of disqualifying faults. The judge thinks, according to the breed standard, they are worthy of being bred. That is why the five have got into the final stages. So then when we say the ultimate goal of shows is to at least maintain and even improve each breed so that the future lines remain of the highest quality. It means now out of the lot, the five that go into the final are worthy of being bred. And then we maintain that quality in the next generations to come. That is what we mean. So then let's go to what are dog shows? In our case, we'll be discussing conformation shows. So when we say conform, what do we mean? To conform simply means... The shape or the structure of something, especially of an animal. So a conformation dog show is a competition in which purebred dogs are judged on the basis of their physical perfection as determined by the breed standards. Let me take it again. A conformation dog show is a competition in which purebred dogs are judged on the basis of their physical perfection as determined by the breed standards. So it's not a matter of the judge likes my dog or my dog is the best dog by word of mouth. But then the judges, with years of experience, will tell you that, yes, this is the breed standard and this is what your dog is, according to the breed standard. So when you see a winner dog among many dogs, it's not just because the judge knows the person or the person has the best dog by word of mouth, but then the dog actually meets the standard. The dog available there at the show is the best dog that meets the standard. That is why it's the winner dog. So why do we have dog shows? First of all, we need to know that judges select winners based on the ability to contribute and improve the next generation of dogs. What, what, what do we mean by this? When we say judges select winners based on the ability to contribute and improve the next generation of dogs. The fact that your dog is a pedigree dog doesn't mean it's, it's a dog worthy of being bred. The reason for shows is you send, I have uh, 10 females or 10 males or so many dogs in my house. The dogs I think would add on. Uh, as for, per my knowledge I have on the breed, I send them for a better evaluation by someone with more experience. So I send my five females there, the judge goes through everything and says A is better than B, these are A's faults, these are B's faults. So then before I breed to the next, you know, before I breed to the next a female with any of my dogs or bitches, I have an informed decision on paper by an expert that, oh, the hinds should be improved, the head is too small, the head is too wide, the eyes a bit light, I need to be made to dark. So that is what shows are about. That is why we have dog shows. Dog shows help us with evaluation of breeding stock. That's what I just explained. And then they offer a more practical purpose for dog enthusiasts. So there are many dog lovers in town who say, I have a Rottweiler, I love a Rottweiler, my Rottweiler is A, my Rottweiler is B, according to the breed standard, my Rottweiler is this and that. At dog shows, you have an expert opinion, not something someone has read online, but judges will see through series of testing. And then most of the judges that have been coming to Ghana to judge our dogs have been judging for over 10, 15 years across breeds. So they really understand what they are doing. We'll go to the next point. Many breeders consider championship a prerequisite for breeding. So yes, it's not that everybody wants a champion dog. But then uh, what happens is once your dog is a champion dog, considering the judge and considering the kind of competition they went to or it went through to be the champion, people believe that your dog is worthy of being bred. That's why champion dogs are mostly sought for. And then we create breed awareness when we go for dog shows. For example, if there's an all-breed show, 
and then each breed uh, represents only 10 dogs and then your breed a rottweiler boa boo a bull mastiff whatever it is whatever breed it is come in their numbers about 300 of them yes everybody's like wow so many beautiful dogs even though they've not been judged yet but then that hype is there that tension is there that we've created that attention for them when do we have dog shows this is dependent on your breed clubs breed populations and members drive to do what is right and as often as possible so your breed club can say we can have a three or four or five shows a year but then also depends on the breed population if you happen to have a breed say like a rottweiler and then if you have a breed like say rottweiler and then there are only 10 rottweilers and then uh, you will need to bring a judge in and you need a breed specific judge it's going to be difficult considering logistics so then when we say breed populations it means we should have more members of the breed being in the club then together we can do things together and then uh, about uh, members drive to do what is right as often as possible when you have enough members doing things right then it moves from just ordinary shows we can even talk to anton tony spindler like last time when he came he offered that uh, the breeding suitability test can be done in ghana for us by himself uh, under the adrk but then we can't have 10 members with only two dogs doing that because the costs involved for bringing the judge and going through everything is very expensive so that's what we mean by members drive to do what is right and as often as possible when we have working breed clubs we have higher uh, breed populations. We have higher members in clubs with the right uh, mindset on what is to be done. Dog shows be conducted. So they can be conducted in any location at any time, provided the following are made available. A qualified judge for the breed, a venue free of distractions, excessive heat, and enough ventilations. Competitors, and of course, sponsors. So you can have dog shows at the beach. You can have in car garages. You can have in parks. You can have on football fields and then basketball courts. So then we go to uh, disqualifying faults. So in animal breed standards, a fault is an aspect of appearance or temperament that is considered detrimental to the breed type of the animal's breed. So when you say breed type, it simply means uh, the identifiers, what, what makes a breed a breed. So example, you see a bull mastiff and then you're able to tell this is a bull mastiff. You don't see a bull mastiff and call it a boa bull or see a bull mastiff and call it a bordeaux. That is what we call a breed type. So when we say disqualifying faults, like I said, in animal breed standards, a fault is an aspect of appearance or temperament that is considered detrimental to the breed type of the animal's breed. So example, someone says I have a Rottweiler and you go and it's all brown or fawn you're like ah what is this that's what we we mean by the definition of the disqualifying faults so this is further divided into two groups i mean the faults is further divided into two groups we have one being eliminating disqualifying or major faults and then we have minor or aesthetic faults so faults may either be major faults that is preventing the dog from being shown in the conformation range or being bred by responsible breeders so like i said uh, the, as i stated earlier on a fawn rottweiler no responsible breeder would breed this dog or even consider showing this dog so we continue with all minor faults such as coat texture that can easily be corrected by careful breeding in one or two generations a major fault would be a breed type fault like i stated a brown rottweiler which diminishes the overall look of the breed another major fault would be a visible structural problem of the dog that prevent the animal from doing the type of work for which it was bred so what's why is for heading so if you have a rottweiler that can't walk well that can't run well or has bad hinds that suffers to move how is it going to be able to move remember the power of the dog is from the hinds since dogs have enormous variation in appearance what is or is not considered desirable or undesirable depends on the individual breed appearance and historical background that's what kind of work it was bred to do individual breed clubs whose members write the breed standard for their breed decide which aspects of their appearance and temperament that breeders should work towards eliminating in the breed so like what wireless initially we had uh, some with long coats some with white patches because of the history of the breed so along the line uh, the breed clubs that's the adrk mainly because that's where the origin of the breed is they said so we clear out the white we clear out the long hair we clear out unstable temperaments that is why adrk is up there so those undesirable aspects of the appearance and temperaments are called faults so what constitutes a fault may differ from breed to breed so with bull mastiffs a pincer bite is allowed with what's why it's only a zigzag bite so some examples of disqualifying faults are i mean cut across all breed a male with one ball visible signs of dysplasia very nervous very shy very aggressive dog or bitch and then uh, in rottweilers we have a disqualifying for the rottweilers a ring tail any bite other than the scissor bite 
and then we go to the minor fault. So with minor faults, usually there are faults that can be corrected in one or two generations through selective breeding. Example, light eyes, ear setting, pink gums, uh, visible corner of lips, too long in the back or too short in the back, among many others. So all breeders, I employ all, all breeders, should have their latest updated breed standards to learn, ask questions and seek education from judges. With Rot Wireless, our latest one was in 2018. Thanks guys for watching once again. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell notification for our alerts. And then uh, our next episode will be on semen analysis and blood chemistry by a Dr. Vet. Jungle.